وسلم as he's meant to have said ashabi kun najum bi ayhim aqtadaytum ihtadaytum bi kama companions like stars and anyone you take as a guide your guide is the right to buy them and if you want the state of bilal be like bilal and be like maula bilal huh? and who are the abdal today yani yani na allah ta'ala alam yani like like for what reason would you want to know who the abdal are like for what reason So like who are the abdal today? Like we we know many of Allah Taala's people upon the face of the earth, and we ain't gonna sat in their presence once. And now we want to ask about those who be on the veil ordinarily. La Allah wa Alam, you know, min husn al Islam al Mar tarkuhu ma la yani. You know when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about the abdal, arba'in, the forty abdal of Sham. You don't hear once companion saying Ya Rasulullah man hum, sami him Ya Rasul. What are their names? Ya Rasulullah, we we go find the body. Shuf, go find that body. Shuf, and Allah Taala has His people who are made manifest. They're made known, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has His people who remain hidden, who remain hidden. And once, Mashallah Taala, when we were in Tarim, we went to the Zamba. We were in the Zamba and the great graveyard of Ahlul Bayt inside the Tarim. And we were there with Habib Ali. So we it's night. We spent most of the night there in the Zamba. And we were going from grave to grave inside of the Zamba, and Habib Ali was. Explain who were the imams of the Barzakh, whose grave we were standing at. The dars of the Zambel in the Zambel with Habib Ali al Jafri. So the Fakir thereafter, we saw Habib Umar, and so asked Habib Umar a question like Habib, Subhanallah, in the Zambel, Subhanallah, Habib. And so the question similar here, Habib, where are them people now on the earth? Where are they? And those who are in the Barzakh, where are their likes now on the face of the head? Habib Umar just laughed. Habib Umar just laughed. He laughed. He had a laugh. That's the way that he just he just laugh aloud, yeah, yeah, Habib Umar. Then when Habib Umar like I, I, I now calm down a bit because it is he's like we're like because he, if you understand the demands of the Zambo, you're like where we just want we just want one of them, innit? Give us one fakir, give us one sakaf, give us one nihmar, give us one. Are we good, yeah? So but where, where are they? And so Habib Umar laughed after he finished laughing. He said, Allah Taala has His people, and His people are of two types in life. They're those He manifests. And the laws he keeps hidden. There was ages where the majority of Allah Taala's people were manifest; very few were hidden. We live in an age where the majority are hidden; very few are manifest. Just the age with it, but the people know the people are still there. What then is our concern? The ones who are manifest. The, the, that's our concern. The ones who are, who are manifest. And a sign that you're truly concerned about the ones who are hidden is your connection to the ones who are manifest. It's that, yeah. In the age of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are different types of Sahaba, and this is for us. There are different types of Sahaba. There are those Sahaba who were situated around the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, they will cry, worship Khalil Rasulullah. They will cry whenever they're apart from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They cry at night. Yeah, and look, you know, when we think about it, maybe some of us, oh, I'm Dabi, I'm sure you must know. I'm sure you must know some roughnecks in the city, yeah. But if you know Ruflex, you're not really, really going to see a Ruflex cry in there. Sahaba, by the definition of the term, yeah, when they cry, and there's there's not been a people created who are more dangerous and violent as the Sahaba. Rabbil Allah, I'm not going to cry for the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But then there's a type of Sahaba, type who lives at a distance from the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's a type. Then beyond, but that's a type. But note both whether you're always with him or whether you're really with him, you connect to him. It's just love him, darajat, and the rabbi him. And it just have their different degrees of Allah Taala. But in that same age, you have people in that age who know of him, yet they never saw him. They were not with him. They know of him. Sure. Just to make it a bit more clearer, they even believe in him. And they may even be great people from amongst them, yeah. but yeah, they live in the age of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They believe in the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they don't connect to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam physically. Sure. Allah Taala Alam consider us a best from that group. Why? I'm talking many of us. Yeah, we ain't even sat with Allah Taala's people. We ain't sat. Like we, a lot of us didn't even had, had the intent to sit. Like we sit, quote to go to this island here, and our expectation 
is that them supposed to come to us? <laughs> like that come to us, yani. Yani, men a'lam fil ard. In al-Bukhari, men a'lam fil ard. Yani, who is the most knowledgeable person on the face of the earth? They are saying Musa, alayhi salam. Musa said, Ana, I'm the most knowledgeable man on the face of the earth. Allah ta'ala reveals, <laughs> Abdi Khadar. That was my slave Khadar. But Moses greater than Khadar. But Moses didn't say, Ya Allah, send him to me. <laughs> ya Allah, man, is he going to come and visit me? <laughs> ya Allah, he didn't say that. He said, Aina ajiduhu ya Rabb. Where will I find him, my Lord? Where will I find him? And look, Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala says, Majma' al Bahrain, at the meeting of the two seas. A lot of them to tell you what meaning of the two seas. They tell you what two seas. What meaning of it? Shof, did, did, did Moses go to go to go to the River Jordan? Did Moses go to Khartoum, the, the, the Sudan? Did Moses go to Anatolia, to, to Istanbul? The, the meeting, the, the Bosphorus there. Uh, did Moses go to where? To uh, Gibraltar, the strongest opinion. He went to Gibraltar. But why the Imams mentioned all the others? You can understand because he went to the all. <laughs> he's looking. He's going to, whatever he knows is a bunch of Bahrain. Moses going there. So, and the one Allah Ta'ala wanted was the Rock of Gibraltar. The Rock of Gibraltar. We're saying the Musa Alayhi Salaam. Show where he goes. You ain't been the Rock of Gibraltar yet. <laughs> so, I love the Rock of Musa. Ah, I can't, Allah, yani, yani, the ones who truly, truly, truly desire Allah Ta'ala's people, you should rihal ilayhim. You should, yani, so, they're gone, yani. they're gone. They're gone, yani. You know, the Fakir, we remember after the beginning of this affair of, of Dawah and Warabi, we remember you know, Muslims then, Muslims, there was a degree of, I'm gone, I'm, who? Murabd al-Hajj, where? Gone. Habib al who? What? Where? Gone. Dr. Sa'id al who? What? Where? Gone. People gone, Harry. Nowadays, when are they coming to England? They're going to do a tour. <laughs> like, you know, you're going to do a tour. They're coming to our masjid. Can you please come to my house, please? Please, so like what's happened there? Like what's happened there? Subhanallah. That's Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq. So, so inshallah Ta'ala. Yani. In your previous session, I think you said Allah Ta'ala can revoke wilaya. Could you please elaborate? So, and the, the wilaya that's revocable is the wilaya that's non-revocable. Clear. It's, it's, it's issue of the Quran, issue likewise of the Sunnah as well. Issue, yeah. There are people who give them wilaya in the Sunnah and revoke. There are people who show sure, so people had it. Were, make sure you understand them. There were people who who believed in the Rasul Sallallahu followed the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, embraced the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and thumma kafar. Thumma kafar. Akala. They're not Sahaba, but they believed in him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They followed in him. They learned the religion. Some of them even appointed as teachers of the Quran, teachers of the deen. Abdullah ibn Khattal. There, Shof. Abdullah the Khattal came. Abdullah the Khattal in the beginning of his affair. I'm fair on the likes of them. Will I revocable? You're revocable. Belam ibn Ba'ura, Surah Al Araf. Belam ibn Ba'ura. Belam ibn Ba'ura had Ismail al Azam. He had the supreme name of God. What type of will I is that? When you've got the supreme name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala revoked that one time. Jalla Jalala wa ta'ala ta'ala matu. And so will I have two types? There are those. They rely irrevocable. They reach a point where it's irrevocable. Yani. But there is a type that, mashallah ta'ala, although you get over the initial finishing line, it ain't finished yet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can drag you right back. And every wali fears that. It doesn't matter if he achieves, achieves irrevocable wilaya. His fear is the draj. That's their fear now. That Allah Ta'ala, from where they perceive now, Allah Ta'ala drag them right back into the abyss of Kufr, Jalla, Jalala, wa Ta'ala, 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 Ta'ala. But this religion keeps you on your toes, yani. On your toes, you take nothing for granted. You know, and Abu Bakr Siddiq, if I had one foot in Jannah, I would still not feel safe on the Makkah of Allah Ta'ala. One foot in Jannah, I would still not feel safe. And we should always consider, no, no matter what you reach in religion, you've got, both got one foot. In, yani, at any point, Allah Ta'ala could revoke that. Jalla Jalala wa Ta'ala Ta'ala Matu. That's Allah Ta'ala for safety and security. Yani. I mean, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Anyone present have any questions, inshallah Ta'ala? Well, the, the online is, the, yani, they keep me up till later at night. Yani, the, online is, yani, the online is a lot blessed of all. MashaAllah Ta'ala.
what would you say? What would you say is the, the biggest challenge and battle that we have in this day and age? Low and you know, the biggest challenge, Danny, I think along what we may mention over today. I think the biggest challenge you always mention is the challenge of knowledge. That's, that's the biggest hurdle. The biggest hurdle is the biggest hurdle of knowledge. And Abu Muhammad al-Ghazali, he faces that as the first hurdle. And Imam al-Ghazali goes further, he said, and it's almost an insurmountable hurdle. Don't think you could get it and you're over it. it it's that, and, and the, the Ummah of the Rasul, because if you look at or watch the problem of the Ummah of the Rasul, it's essentially ignorance. Ignorance of Allah Ta'ala, ignorance of the Rasul, ignorance of his way, it's ignorance. And this deen, the foundation is knowledge, and it's the foundation of knowledge. And again, knowledge, rather, knowledge, knowledge, dalala ala Allah. And we say, look, okay, knowledge, no, I still need fake no. Knowledge, dalala ala Allah. Knowledge that will guide you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be, you know, and what guides you, it shows you the imperative of reaching Allah ta'ala, it equips you, motivates you. I can, like, you ain't looking back, you ain't looking back. It, it's knowledge, dalala ala Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like, like you know, you know, you know, we look at us as Muslims, us as Muslims, that you can you can see people don't know God. It's evident, Janet. Because especially when you see people who do know him. Like when you meet people who know Allah Ta'ala, you oh, now I recognize Ahlullah, the people of Allah Ta'ala. It's evident people don't know the Rasul. It's evident, yeah, it's evident. And sometimes you only get that when you see the people who do know him. When you see them, you're like, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, yeah. It. That's why the religion, which is a human transaction, it's a human exchange. Yeah, and it, often, you know, we can read a thousand and one books. In, in, it's not done. That you can a thousand and one books on Mr. Point. Yeah, it, you must see the people. Remember, it's it's again the early generation. They had zero books. Zero. They had no books. They had no mobile phones. They had no computers. They had no internet. None of that. They just had Rasulullah in human form. They manifest before their very eyes. You with it? And so now the religion is a human transaction. Mean what I'm trying to say by that, we've got to see his people to know how to be his people. We have to, yani. And then they become the examples. Look, Allah Ta'ala hold on to books like so and I read. Like you read what? Yeah, what do you read? Rafto, like Imam Abu Hassan Shadri, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He said, I don't write books, I write men. Huh? That never we Muhammad is that there. Okay, our problem, and I allow it's not it's not for negotiation unless it's a conversation of knowledge. You really? But knowledge that is, and that's the first obstacle, we've got to resolve that.